Hi, this is Dr. James Johnson. I am a ophthalmologist specializing in the treatment of very bothersome eye floaters. I have a practice in Southern California, and it is the only one in the world dedicated and exclusively treating eye floaters with a laser. What you see here up on the screen is a ring-shaped floater. It has a name. It's called a Weiss ring. This, this floater actually existed in this person's eye essentially their whole life. It formed as part of a membrane uh, up around the optic nerve, and uh, recently, uh, this patient is in his 50s, it peeled away from the retina and uh, is now suspended in the middle part of the eye. Well, as light enters the eye, it casts a ring-like shadow, and of course the thing moves around and is very, very bothersome. And so, um, this is what I do as I fire a laser at these things and break them up. So let me explain, uh, kind of give you an overview of, of uh, the, the logistics and how the laser works. So what you see here on the overlay is a artist's representation of an eye cut in half and in cross-section. And uh, to the left, the uh, silvery uh, colored object is a contact lens. It's actually a handheld contact lens that I hold up against the eye. The eye is numbed. It doesn't feel it at all. Uh, and it does a number of things. Uh, people are always concerned about, you know, what if I blink? What if I move? Well, it prevents uh, blinking of the eyelids. It stabilizes the eye. It magnifies the image. It does a few other things. Uh, absolutely have to have the contact lens uh, for treatment. Uh, through the dilated pupil, we have a cone-shaped energy that the, uh, the laser energy is, is in the form of. And unlike a typical laser beam uh, that is a single line, this, this cone-shaped energy only delivers the energy at the tip of the cone, the apex of that cone. And this is uh, one of the great fa safety features of this treatment is, is as long as I am fully aware of where that cone tip is, you know, the focal point is located in space, and I keep that safely away from the retina and keep it safely away from the lens, uh, the procedure can be very arguably uh, a, a very safe procedure. So uh, that's the basics of it. And, I, and uh, the eye is, is stable in position, the head is stable in position, and I basically move the entire laser using a joystick uh, into different positions. Uh, through various you know gyrations and techniques and such. So I'm going to switch back to um, live uh, treatment and I'll kind of describe what's going on here. So to orient you a bit, um, we're looking through a big dilated pupil. The light source that, that illuminates this ring is, is shifted off to the left. That's why there's a little bit of glare and reflection off to the left there. And then you might be able to appreciate there are two red beams that I use for focusing and, and uh, using that cone model of energy, the red beams run along the top and the bottom of the cone. So when those two red beams are focused on top of each other, um, uh, coincidental, uh, that's where my laser is absolutely focused. The retina is further back. It's very, very blurry way back there. That's one of the ways I can tell uh, where I'm located in space is I can't even see any of the detail of the retina, retinal blood vessels, optic nerve, anything else like that. And I, and I just know from experience, and, and you know, I'm using binocular stereoscopic vision here, here um, you know, I know where I'm located. And we're right about in the middle part of that vitreous. So uh, as, I, as I fire the laser, you see these things floating upwards. So those are gas bubbles. So what the laser is doing is basically vaporizing, sublimating those solid proteins into gases. Uh, no one's really measured those gases. We don't know if it's uh, probably water vapors, maybe some um, carbon dioxide, maybe nitrogen gas, maybe a little bit of a mix. <clears throat> and uh, you know they're floating up to the roof part of the eye. Now it's interesting. The patient actually perceives it as debris falling. They think that it's parts of the floaters uh, that the floater that is falling to the bottom of the eye. But that's because, like a camera, the image is backwards and reversed uh, in in the eye. So as I'm working my way through this, uh, one of the nice things about the Weiss rings is they're fairly well defined, fairly discreet, and uh, kind of start at one end. I just had the patient move their eye there to uh, move the floater. And I'll kind of, uh, in this case, I kind of broke it at first and started working from one way and kind of working it around. Now, sometimes little bits and uh, fragments will break off, and I'll chase those down and uh, vaporize those and then come back to the original and break it down and break it down and break it down. Uh, this patient had a bit of cataract. That's why one of the reasons the image is not entirely perfectly clear. Uh, and then my view looking is always going to be better than what the camera can, can bring up because the camera is pulling off maybe about 10% of the light um, away from me, and it's just never going to be quite as good as the image I'm getting. So you can see I'm breaking it down, breaking it down. It's already smaller. It's probably about half, maybe, of the original floater. What I'm going to do is I'm going to um, uh, stop the video. I'm going to jump ahead a few minutes uh, because, you know, watching every shot of the laser is like watching paint dry, I guess. Uh, so let me stop it here. Okay, and now I've jumped ahead uh, maybe 
two or three minutes or so, three or four minutes, and um, working in the same area, same lighting, same everything. Uh, now we're just uh, picking at uh, some of the small little residuals, little bits and pieces and fragments. Um, so even to the untrained eye, uh, these little um, creamy, cream-colored little bits and flecks are significantly reduced from the original. And one of the nice things about the optics of these photos is you don't have to have 100% perfectly clear vitreous to have a happy patient. You just got to get the big stuff, get most of the stuff. Some of the small little bits and pieces, if they're far enough away from the retina, uh, they won't cast shadows onto the retina and they, they generally will not be seen by the patient. Although I am a bit compulsive uh, with my treatments and I don't like to leave anything behind if I can. So um, even though I could stop even a few minutes ago and say that's good enough, um, I will keep picking at, picking at stuff. And then I also find that once I'm done with the white ring and I start exploring around, I'll always find some other stuff. And that's what I just noticed right here. Uh, as I had the patient uh, flick their eye down and back up again, there was some cloudy, hazy, a little bit more linear stuff that wasn't the original white ring, and that just kind of flicked upwards. And it's uh, always good to go back and you know clean up some of that stuff as well. Uh, even though he was he was uh, describing subjectively bothered by the f the, the ring shaped floater. Uh, I found that in cleaning up some of this other material, the quality of vision overall will improve as well, even in some kind of non-specific ways. So I'll stop here and we'll jump ahead to the end of this first treatment. We're just on one treatment. Um, jump ahead, there's some bubbles there. Uh, jump ahead and uh, and kind of look at the overview uh, that we're, we're done with this first treatment. And here we are at the last few minutes, just still doing some cleanup here. And um, yeah, I'm pretty but happy with this. I'm uh, the patient. I did see the patient the next day, and uh, you know the floater was gone. Um, she's just aware of a little bit of very light stuff there, but I'm very pleased with that. There's a treatment uh, all done. Thank you for watching.